So, um, last week we talked about – what did we talk about last week? Gossip. What? Gossip. gossip. Yes. And what did I compare gossip to? Answer. Yes. Does anybody remember any of the three things that I said it had in common with cancer? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Sure. Um, I asked what we talked about last week, and Chuck said, or Zach, or somebody said gossip, and then I asked um, what I compared it to, and Chuck said cancer. And I said, does anybody <laughs> remember Does anybody remember um, what the three things was, um, three similarities gossip has with cancer? Can't be removed easily. You have it written down in front of you, don't yeah, you? I do. <laughs> That's not, that. I can't help it if I bring my notes. Okay, you brought your notes. That, that, okay, yes. Yes. Can you say that one again? I can't be removed easily. Can't be removed easily. And I think that that's the only one that I really want to emphasize tonight because we're going to look at the other. I remember I said there were two things um, in the church that go <laughs> hand in hand that are the cancers of the church. The first was gossip. What was the second one? Complaining. Complaining. So that's what we're going to look at tonight. Okay. Now what I want you guys to do is focus on the center white dot. Don't look at anything else. Just stare at the center white dot. Okay. Do you guys see black dots? Occasionally. No? Yeah? yeah. How many black dots? Black dots. <laughs> Stare at the center oh, white. Oh, yeah. You see it? Yeah. Like in every one. Yeah. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of black dots, huh? Yeah. But now if you look, there actually are no black dots. Right. Yeah. That's weird. Right? Yeah. Okay, now I want you to look at this next image and tell me when you find the word, but don't tell me what the word is. There's a word in there? I found it. I found it. Tell me when you find it, Diana. Be alone. <laughs> oh, okay. You see it? it? Yeah. Okay, now focus on the word. Okay? Now try to unsee the word and see the other things instead. Tell me if you're able to do it. You can? No? Did you not see the word but see something else? Try to focus back on the other thing that you originally saw rather than the words. Okay. Yeah. Can you do it? There's just a bunch of boxes there that's all. But, but you guys are able to do it? Okay, was it a little difficult? Okay, this is my point. This is what complaining does. Okay, there are no black dots. But when with complaining, you kind of focus on the negative. And then you see black dots everywhere. Because that's what you're focusing on. Complaining, do, that's what complaining does to you. Okay, and also, complaining is like this word. It's hidden, but then when you start complaining about it, all of a sudden you see it, and you have a hard time seeing anything else. See what I mean? That's what complaining does. It focuses all your attention, all your energy on that on that bad thing, and it's something that you can't just look over or, 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 or move on, move past. Okay? So that takes us to the question of the week. Why does it matter if I complain? What were some of your guys' answers? Complaining should the lack of trust in God. Oh, good one. I didn't think of that. Good. Uh, why don't you elaborate a little bit? Well, like, okay, we say that he's going to provide our needs, but yet we complain when they're not provided right when we think that they should be. Or how we think they should be. Okay, anybody else? Complaining focuses on the problem rather than on the solution. Okay. And when you continue to complain, you kind of forget to try to solve the problem because you just kind of get content in complaining. Hmm. Good. Good. I like that. You get content in complaining. Anybody else? I think it hurts your witness. Okay. I'll elaborate a little bit. Well, like, like what Chuck was saying and what um, Serena was saying, you know, those type of things. And then the person seeing you complain that's not a Christian or is a Christian and they're kind of swaying, you know? 
and they see, well, maybe Christianity isn't all that it is after all. I'll go even a step further. I think sometimes even a strong Christian, if you complain long enough to around them, eventually it wears down their spirit. Anybody else? Or anything else? If you guys have another answer, you, you can answer again. That's fine. You can turn people away from you as well. Hmm. Ooh, I see. You complaining and then they're like, wait, yeah. no. Yeah, I have experienced that one before. Yeah. Good. I, I, I'm, I'm liking this. Um, it changes my outlook. I see things differently. Okay. Um, I become ungrateful. Uh, I learned to resent others. Really, just a, a, you guys touched on a lot of this stuff yourselves. Um, I will start to gossip. Eventually, if you complain long enough, you will start to gossip. It's just they go hand in hand. You can't really separate them from one from the other. Eventually, if you gossip long enough, you you will find yourself complaining. If you complain it long enough, you'll find yourself gossiping. In fact, sometimes they're one and the same. Um, uh, I will feel down. When we complain, we're going to feel more depressed. We're going to have more off days. We're going to have more days of just, I just don't want to be around people. See what I mean? Feel, feel down. Um, God will often withhold the blessings. Um, his blessings, I should say. Um, I will be unable to feel contentment or notice the good. Unable to feel contentment. Um, when, we, when we focus on the complaint, it's not just a matter so much anymore of just overcoming or just focusing on the good again. We find ourselves in a place where we literally can't focus on the good. All we can think about is that bad thing. Um, um, we'll, uh, and then unable to feel the good, uh, notice the good too. Um, yeah, which obviously trickles into other areas of our lives. We won't be content at our, at our work, at our, in our ministry, in our families, and with our friends. Whatever it is that, that we do, we won't feel contentment in that thing anymore because we've kind of set that negative tone in our uh, an atmosphere in, in our in our life, in our worldview, if you will. Um, I will create problems that don't exist. Oftentimes, when we got when we complain. Um, it trickles into other areas that, that we then become uh, ungrateful about in those areas, and then we start seeing things that aren't even there. You know, like, oh, this person did this, and it's like, well, no, they really didn't. You just thought that they did because you were already upset because of this. See what I mean? And that's just kind of the way that complaining works. Um, thinking that gossip and complaining are things that can be tamed are just a little bit naive. Gossip and complaining, like other sins, they spread like wildfire. They just keep going. Um, they don't just impact this one area that you intended it for. It'll trickle into other things, trickle into other relationships. Um, uh, and I will continue and send that goes hand in hand with that one. Um, but I think you guys really – I really liked your guys' answers. Um, I, I really liked especially Nicole's answer because um, that's something I was actually going to bring up um, is, is the fact that you can literally lose out on good friends by, by being a person who complains. I mean <laughs> – <Yeah. laughs> And, and people who would have done you good and you would have grown from, you would have learned from, you'll miss that opportunity simply because you were complaining. You know, so. Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, Serena smells. You know. <laughs> she has cooties. <laughs> Just kidding. So what is complaining? What does it mean to complain? Um, talking negative. Okay. I think it goes deeper than that, though. Yeah. Were you going to say something, Zach? Yeah. Still thinking about it? Still thinking. Okay. You can complain about like, so oh, many things. Oh, well, I was going to say, you can complain about anything. so many things. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's about something either you don't like about that person or there's something going on that you don't like. Mm. Have you if it doesn't go your way, then you're going to start complaining about it. Mm. Okay. So... But see, you don't even have to be complaining about other people. You could be just complaining about things in your own life. You mm -hmm. know, okay. With or somebody God. trusting in God. Complaining about your circumstances. Yeah. Okay. Why am I so poor and everybody else yeah. around me is rich? Yeah. Why am I struggling yeah. with health problems and everybody else around me seems to be in wonderful health? You know, like, why me? Why does bad things always happen to me? Yeah. Focusing on the bad, usually while ignoring the good. Usually, not always, but usually. Um, remember, complaining is something that is here and comes out here. 
Sometimes gossip starts here and goes this way. Complaining always starts here and goes this way. Because it's something it's something in your heart. Does that make sense? Gossip works its way into your heart, but complaining comes from the heart. <coughs> um, and uh, remember, not every time that you complain are you going to be completely ignoring the bad. But eventually, if you complain long enough, you will ignore the bad. <laughs> I mean, good. Ignore the good. Sorry, I said that backwards. Um, focusing on the negative. How many um, you guys who have, who have been in relationships, and your your girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, whatever, will say something, and you interpret it in the most offensive way possible? <laughs> yeah. Oh my okay. Gosh, I am so bad. Okay. See what I mean? It's like that. But in other areas too, <laughs> you know, you 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 only see the negative. You can't help but see but see the bad, um, or uh, focusing on the irritation, the thing that's bothering you, rather than, you know, the other things. And you know, a pastor has said something about this. I believe he got it from uh, Rick Warren, but I'm not positive. There's always, whenever there's bad things happening, there's always good things happening too, and whenever there's Good things happening. There's always bad things happening too. They, there's just the, there's so much things going on in the world. The problem is when it happens to us. Sometimes all we focus on are those things that are that are irritating us or the bad things. Okay. Um, so, any questions on that? Okay. All right. Why do we complain? Because we're not satisfied. Okay. Okay. Get something done across the board. You think it will help? Ah. Ooh, okay. Um, yeah. That's kind okay. Of what I was gonna say because you want to see things change, but you maybe don't know how to go about making them change. Hmm. Okay. So sometimes you feel like complaining. I just need to be heard, and then things will change. Hmm. Okay. Good answers. Oh, by the way, guys, there are these sheets down here. Did you see them? Mm -hmm. If you would like them. I, I, I totally forgot to mention them. Um, they're just little note aids. Um, now, uh-oh. Um, now, these are different from last week, and I want you guys' opinion as to what you guys like more. These ones are real simple, basic things just to help you take notes. It's it's not specified to the lesson. It's the exact same thing it, it, for every week. If you don't like these, we can do like I did last week where I asked specific questions that you have to answer throughout the course of the lesson. Kind of get familiar with this one and, and tell me what your preference is, okay? Um, next week or, or sometime during the week, let me know what the preference is. Um, so, uh, good answers. Any other answers about why do we... To vent. Okay. All right. <coughs> All right. I, I like that answer. I think maybe because we think higher of ourselves than we should. Oh, okay. I like that answer. Very... Hmm. Like, I deserve this. Mm, yeah, okay. Yeah. Remind me to come back to that. Just remember what you just said, okay? Um, what did you say? Something higher of ourselves. Um, oh. I'm really liking your guys' answers. I think sometimes, too, people complain when they are hurt or they they have something wrong with them. Yeah, mm. um, that's true. Something unfair that happened? Well, you know, for example, <clears throat> there was a guy that he was part of my dad's business. And he was just always, and had a very bad attitude, was always complaining and, you know, just very disgruntled and stuff. And uh, come to find out, he had like a pinched nerve on his brain. Ooh. That was causing him a lot of uh, pain. Oh. So after he got that, uh, they did surgery on him and released that nerve. Wow. He was a totally different person. Wow. That's intense. That's intense. That's wow. Huh. I like that one. Anything else? I think it's really like just self focus, you yeah. know. It's complaining okay. kinda of comes about, you know, me and me. Okay. It's kind of a selfish thing because you're always feeling like you're being wrong. Okay. Okay. So it kinda of goes right in hand with what Ben was saying, yeah. Okay. Um so the, I, I, not that the, once again, these things are not exhaustive lists. Okay. Um, sometimes if we're too tired. Um, we did 
That's kind of like what we do, but as adults, we do the yeah. exact same thing. So, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, so sometimes it's, it's things like that. You know, where we haven't gotten enough sleep, we have a pinched nerve in our brains. <laughs> you know, these are these are things that that, that happen like that. Um, if we're irritated. If we're in a situation that we find irritating, or someone is bothering us, it's easier to find something bad. You know, for instance, um, Zach's son is in the ER. When things like that, and what happen like that, they're they're completely unexpected. You know, you, there's no way to plan for it. And there's no way to plan for it. And um, sometimes, like let's say this was something that that, that gets prolonged for weeks. See, I mean, you start to get that buildup of irritation. Yeah. It's a situation you can't fix. You just get irritated about it because um, you can't fix it. So once again, it goes hand in hand with that. Um, if, we, if we're disappointed about a situation, uh, maybe we've been praying about something, um, and then when it actually comes to pass, it doesn't play out like we were hoping it would play out. You know what I mean? I mean, it just kind of leaves us with that empty feeling. You know? What, you guys know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, that, that that feeling like uh, all that prayer was for nothing, you know. Yeah. Um, like opening a rec center and having four kids on the first day. <laughs> See what I mean? Those things that, that that to you it's a big deal, and you just have that personal disappointment in in, in, in yourself. Um, um, somebody already mentioned about this. Um, have something to talk about. Sometimes, you know, it's just like gossip. You, you don't really have anything to talk about, so you just kind of start complaining about something. You're know, like, oh, my boss. You, right, right. You know what I mean? Like, Or somebody else is talking about their bad boss, and so you're like, well, I want to fit in. You know what I mean? We're the same kids that we were, people that we were in high school. We've just gotten older, but, I mean, we're the same people. You know, same insecurities. Um, um, unresolved conflicts. But that that goes hand in hand with the whole um, this uh, uh, irritation thing, you know, things that when they're when they're not resolved, like you know, a conflict with somebody or something like that, um, a situation that's ongoing, like cancer and that kind of stuff, it just leaves us with that that kind of um, build up, I guess you could say. What does the Bible say about complaining? Does any can anybody think about a verse right off the top of their head? No. Well, I'm going to turn to these. If you would like to turn to them as well, you can. I believe there's one that says the everything is out for I believe we're going to look at one that's real close to that, if not the exact same thing. Um, numbers 11. Say where it is, though. <coughs> you like it's, um... It's one of those... Uh, First Peter 4.9. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> numbers 11. Um, verses 1 through 4. Um, and the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes. And when the Lord, Lord heard it, his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire uh, died down. So the name of that place was called Tibera, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. Now the rabble was <clears throat> that was among them had a strong craving. And the people of Israel also wept again and said, oh, that we had meat to eat. So we find them complaining twice within the span of four verses. Um, now, I, I do want you to, to realize one thing before we go on to sudden judgment and condemnation of them. But first, I want to hop to 21, um, 4 through 5. Some, <coughs> She's the the oh. yeah. uh, from Mount Hor... They sat out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people began impa uh, became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Um, I'm going to stop there. Now, the food that they're talking about at this point, um, I believe, is the um, the manna. I believe is, is what they're talking about at this point. Um, and... Honestly, how many of you guys have ever eaten the same thing for longer than two weeks? Fajitas. fajitas. <laughs> I'm fine with never having fajita again. I'm fine with it. You have to? Yeah. What was it? Ramen soup. Can you eat it still now? Yes. You can? <laughs> I can't. I, I can't eat fajitas now. What's that? 
uh, spaghetti. I will not. You won't eat it anymore? No. Because you had it too much? Uh-huh. So try to understand what, 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 what they're... What they're <coughs> we're going on, I think this is somewhere around three years of eating the same thing well, every that's day. That's different. That's a long time. <laughs> Right? Okay, so now you see how easy it would be to complain about having the same meal? Okay, let me give you another example. I raise chickens. That means I have an abundance of eggs. Let's uh-huh. say I have an egg for every single meal of every single day for three years. That's 365 times three. Okay? Whoa. All right? That's a lot of eggs. So I'm sure you see what I'm, see what I'm saying. It's 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 easier to 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 feel like oh Israel wasn't justified and they're complaining until you start realizing we do the same thing. I mean, come on, come on, come on. I thought um, I said I would have done the same thing. <laughs> and then it says, um, um, have you have you guys ever been in a survival situation? Uh, I I used to do survival campouts with with the Royal Rangers. Did, have you guys ever done something like that? Well. You don't pack a meal. You have to catch it and then cook it, um, and or find it and, and cook it. Whatever. Um, I remember one time the only thing I could find was cactus. So we cooked that sucker up and we ate it. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's it's. Not, I don't want to say scary because we always had the option. Okay, the cars are over there. If it comes to like the life or death kind of thing, we can always get out of here. They didn't have that. They were surrounded by hostile nations. They couldn't go back to Egypt because they would have killed them. They couldn't go forward because they would have killed them. And they couldn't stay where they were because God would have killed them. <laughs> so they were kind of hard-pressed on all sides. And they were in the place of, of kind of fearing for their lives here. See what I mean? But yet, God didn't see that as an excuse for complaining. See what I mean? So it doesn't matter what kind of situation we're in. Complaining is a bad thing. Um, Psalm... 95, 2-3. He has a cold. Oh. And that's why we didn't take him over to Mom's tonight. I didn't want the cold air uh, on him. Uh, Psalm 95, 2-3. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. So I could be wrong, but it sounds like this passage is saying that we come into his presence with thankfulness. I'm pretty sure we can't come into his presence with complaining. Um, for the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Um, so once again, focusing on that positive aspect there, Psalm 107, verse 1. Jeez, you would think that he was being tortured back there. <laughs> Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Um, I could really go on with some of these things, but I'm trying not to, I really say, belabor the point. Uh, Proverbs 17.22. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Obviously, that applies to complaining. Um... 1 Thessalonians 5.18 And obviously I'm not reading everything that the Bible has to say about these things. Um, I actually forgot where 1 Thessalonians is. Oh, here we go. Okay, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God uh, in Christ Jesus for you. And give thanks in all circumstances. Uh, Ephesians 4.29. Wait, I'm going the wrong way. That's what threw me off. I put Ephesians after 1 Thessalonians. Um, Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Kind of went hand in hand with what somebody already said about, when, you know, when you complain, it impacts your witness. I think it was Gracie who said that. 
Well, a, a few of you touched on it, like you said about you know the, pushing people away, and she said about that, and one of you two said something similar. But anyways, um, and then uh, Philippians two fourteen. Right there. Do all things without grumbling or questioning. Is that what you're going to say? Okay. Uh, that uh, you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Okay. So that said a few different things. First off, that we wouldn't be, that we wouldn't fall into sin by complaining. And second off, um, that we are, we would have a have a good impact with other people in the world. Um, and was I going through 16, or was I stopping there? I was stopping there. Okay. Um, and then again later on the same book, chapter four, verse eleven through twelve. Um, now, not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. Um, now, remember, this is someone who's had a lot of different problems going on going on in his life. Okay, as far as physical to spiritual, a lot of different things going on for him. Um, I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. So it kind of sounds like he's being a little <coughs> bit arrogant until we get to the next verse. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. That was the secret. So, um, that takes us to the end of that. that so then let's go to James. Starting in verse 1, uh, verses 2 through 4. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet uh, trials of various kinds. <clears throat> For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And then in verse 9 of chapter 5, it says, Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. Um... And then the last passage I want to look up is in 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 9. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. Sometimes we do the good thing, but then we kind of complain while we're doing it. You know what I mean? Well, I'm doing something good. Why aren't they helping me? And a lot of times you get carried away when you start complaining. Yeah. Your mouth just gets ahead of you. Yeah. What is it that they say? Foot and mouth disease. <laughs> Not foot and mouth. Foot and mouth. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so then the question of the week. Is it okay to get angry? It's okay if you do it on Friday. Is it okay to get angry? Write it down because we're going to talk about it next week. Uh, 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 wait. <laughs> Not, no answering. <laughs> no answering, all y'all. I might forget what next time. And th what I want you to do, um, that's what these sheets are for. Um, um, write down the write down the question. But I want you, what I want you to do is I want you to look up um, <coughs> a verse in the Bible that you think supports your view, okay? And I want you to um, oh, I, I, and it cannot be from um, Ephesians. <laughs> because that verse is raped so much that I just don't even want to go there. In fact, it can't be from any of Paul's letters. It can't be from any of Paul's letters. You have to find you have to find something that the Bible says about anger that you feel like supports your view, but it cannot be from one of Paul's letters. Okay. That means if it's anywhere between Romans oh, and the Bible. <laughs> Second Timothy. No. Before, if you're in Hebrews, you're fine. Uh, What's before Hebrews? <laughs> Ephesians. What? Ephesians? Philippians? What's before Ephesians? I thought it was no, Hebrews. What's before Hebrews? Hebrews. Ephesians, isn't it? It's what? Okay, if it's between Romans and Philemon, do not use it. Okay? 
Mm, no. Okay. What if I read it out of a chronological Bible? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Preferably use the Old Testament. Preferably. So, next week we'll, we're looking at anger. Any questions? No? So how are you supposed to express yourself if you can't complain and you can't... I'm kidding. <laughs> if you can't gossip, you can't complain, you can't get mad. That was a joke. No, that that's Why? funny. I'm glad we got that on recording. <laughs> oh, you... Oh. <laughs>